Controlling your AI squad mates in Enlisted is one of the most important skills in the game. It's right up there with the skills like shooting someone directly in their stupid face, and of course, building rally points. We're going to be going over all the different AI commands that you can give to your squad mates, and then in the second half of this video, we're going to be going over different situations and some tips and tricks for using those different commands in various ways. If this video helps you out, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. It does help me out, and I do appreciate it. There's tons of other guides on my channel for everything involved with Enlisted. But with all that out of the way, guys, let's jump into the AI guide. Before we can talk about each command though, we need to talk about how to actually give commands. The first and most common way of giving commands is with the context command. This is done by pressing X on PC or by double tapping X or square on console. This will give all of your AI a command based on what you're currently looking at, or the context of the situation as the name implies. If you're looking at the ground, it'll pinpoint a location for your squad to defend. If you're looking at an objective, it'll command your AI to go to that objective, and so on. When you want to cancel these commands, simply hold down X on PC or hold down Y slash triangle on console. Now that we know how to give commands, we can actually talk about the commands themselves. We're going to start off with the most important command, the hold position command. This is what you're going to be using the most often in my experience in Enlisted. And just by pressing the context command key while looking at the ground, you'll be able to command your AI to hold a position. You'll see a little green marker pop up signifying that this is where they're holding. They're going to group up around that spot, maybe take cover, it's a big maybe, and stay put until you tell them otherwise, or until you're about 50 meters away. Keep in mind that this is a hold position. This is not defend position. The AI is very poor and enlisted, and this command doesn't make them suddenly more effective at defending a spot. They will still struggle with defending an area, so keep that in mind when you're giving them this order. Next up, we have the objective attack or defend command. When you look at an objective, you can command your AI to either attack or to hold that objective. Your AI will rush onto the point, finding some place on the point to hunker down. Now, unfortunately, on many of these objectives, the AI from all the different players who are currently doing this command tend to group up in one little spot, and this will lead to them getting completely wiped out by artillery or really just anyone breaching in with a grenade or a machine gun or anything like that. So always kind of keep that in mind when you're doing this. However, it does have a really big benefit as opposed to the standard hold position command, and that it has no restrictions for distance. Like I mentioned before, the standard hold position will automatically cancel if you're 50 meters or more away from your AI, but this command for objectives has no such restriction. You can be on the other side of the map fighting anyone you might want to or need to, and your AI will simply stay put holding that objective. One of the most underutilized and arguably the most powerful command in all of enlisted is the defuse or plant bomb command i think a lot of players don't even know this exists because you typically don't see a lot of people playing the demolition game mode it's a fairly rare game mode but when playing in demolition you can actually command your ai to arm or disarm bomb sites just run up to it and press the X key with the context command and one of your AI will run up and arm or disarm the site. This is beyond useful since you'll be able to actually defend them while they plant as opposed to screaming at your monitor as a guy runs in and your AI just watches him kill you and then kill them, right? I cannot stress using this command enough when you're playing this game mode. It is by far in my opinion the number one reason why people struggle with this game mode is that they don't know this command exists the only time you should be manually arming or disarming a bomb in demolition is when your squad is dead or if the bomb is about to detonate and you don't want to take the extra second to watch your ai fumble through barbed wire to uh to start disarming going from one of the best and most underutilized commands in enlisted to probably the least used and least useful commands a lot of people don't know this but you can actually command your ai to throw explosive packs at enemy vehicles that are nearby the reason why not many people actually bother doing this is because well one i don't think many people know it but two it's not really good 
it really doesn't work. Uh, I'm including it in this video because maybe they will fix it and make it better in the future, but genuinely speaking, guys, uh, your AI is very, very bad at actually doing this. They will cook the grenade uh, in the explosive pack to the correct timing, but where they throw it is a total, total crapshoot. I mean, there's no way to know. I actually don't even, I can't even put a clip of me doing this in game because of how unbelievably difficult it is to get the AI to even do this. So, um, it's not something that's super worth uh, worrying about, at least at the time of this video releasing, but perhaps in the future it will, uh, be buffed in some way or the AI will be better at it. Um, but keep in mind, this is again, only for explosive packs and it does not matter for, say, if your AI has like a bazooka or something, your AI will not use that bazooka to fire at the enemy vehicle they will just throw an explosive pack at it and probably miss and possibly even kill themselves which is funny at least for all of you engineer players out there you should know that your ai can help you build fortifications whenever you've put a blueprint down and you're building it up you can actually hit the context command and one of your fellow engineers in your squad will run over and start building each time you press this command, only one of your AI is going to help. So if you have a full squad of engineers, make sure to spam that button over and over again to get all of your AI over and build up that, you know, 45 second buildable in just 5 seconds or less. Another fairly useless, but maybe it comes in handy in some way, and you guys should know it anyway, command is the get in vehicle command. So you can command your AI to jump into a vehicle by looking at it and pressing the X key. Again, this isn't super useful in the majority of the time. I can only count on maybe one hand uh, times that I've actually used this and felt like it was necessary. Anytime you're in a vehicle, your AI will automatically jump in anyway, and it's not like they'll use their guns uh, on a tank or something like that without you in it. So uh, again, this command doesn't have a lot of uses, but if you guys find out some cool use that I hadn't considered, then leave a comment down below explaining it. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts, uh, and your crazy ideas and things, uh, in the comments down below. If you ever find yourself downed from an enemy gunshot where you are currently bandaging yourself, you can quickly hit the X key and one of your AI will run over and revive you. Keep in mind that your AI will not consider anyone around you when they do this. They will just sprint over to you and completely throw themselves in the line of fire to revive you. But this also is faster, typically speaking, than you reviving yourself. At least if you don't have any of the perks that increase medkit speed, that is. This can be fairly useful for very niche situations. Like if, say, you know, you're fighting an enemy tank, maybe you catch an enemy shell, uh, you don't go, you don't die, but you go down, right? You can quickly revive yourself and then take out that tank before they have a chance to reload. It's not a very common thing. It's not one that I particularly use very often, but it is one that you guys should know and uh, think about because it can matter significantly uh, in specific situations. So we know how to give orders to our entire squad, but what if we want to give orders to each squad member individually? Like say we want to put a sniper up on the second floor of a building while we have a shotgunner hold the entrance to that building. Well, we can actually do that. If you press the K key on PC or by manually binding it on console, sorry about that guys, that doesn't start manually binded, you'll be able to give individual orders for each squad member. After you hit the key, you'll see on the left side of your screen that there is a little area that is showing which squad member you're currently giving orders to. As you give the order, it'll switch to the next soldier, allowing you to place each soldier into a defensive position very easily. Keep in mind though, guys, that again, just like the hold position order to the entire squad, there the AI is just not that effective. They're just not. Uh, this can be a fun thing to do, and it's certainly more effective than, you know, having your AI all group up uh, on an objective and getting themselves all killed. But at the end of the day, uh, the AI is just simply not good enough for this to be a particularly effective use of your time in game. But it's still worth knowing, and maybe they'll change that in the future. And now we reach our final set of commands that are done through the wheel menu. You can pull up the wheel menu by holding down the alt key on PC or right bumper on console. This will bring up a nice little wheel where you'll be able to give two specific commands to your AI. Number one, you'll be able to request ammo for them, assuming that you are below one magazine left of ammo. 
This will give you exactly one magazine worth of ammo, regardless of how big that magazine is. So this can be pretty useful if you're using, say, a Browning M1919A6 with a 100 round magazine, but it's not so useful if you're using something like a Car 98 with just five extra bullets. However, it's still worth using and getting that extra ammo regardless of, uh, you know, the situation can help you out when you're in a tough spot. The other thing you can do is request healing. This will consume the med kit of one of your AI to heal up your soldier instead of offering your AI the ability to heal themselves later on. So that can be a particularly risky thing to do, but at the end of the day, perhaps you value your current soldier's life more than the life of your AI squad mate. Other than that, guys, you can also change uh, the positioning and the spacing of your AI by holding down the Y key or the right key on D-pad to pull up your squad soldier selection menu. And you'll be able to see on the right side both aggression level and your spacing. You can switch the spacing between normal or standard, wide, and close, which will change the amount of space that these AI all kind of uh, take and distance from each other as well as changing their aggression level from aggressive to passive. If they're aggressive, they'll fire at the first enemies they see, regardless of if they're being fired at first. And if they're on passive, they will hold fire until they have been fired at first, which can be very useful for when you're sneaking around uh, with a big flank or maybe playing as a sniper squad. And now on to some of the most important strategies and tips that I can give for you guys when utilizing your AI. The first of which is how to assault an objective, or defend an objective for that matter. In my opinion, the best way to attack an objective in Enlisted is utilizing your AI as extra lives. Find a position somewhere near the objective, within 50 meters, so your AI won't follow you in, and hide your AI behind a building, inside a building, on the second floor of some area or location nearby. All of these are great locations and things that you can do. Once your AI is safe and secure, you're going to push in one by one with them, trying to eliminate as many enemies off that objective as you can. Once they've been killed off and the objective is clear, you can pull the rest of your AI onto the position and have them start capping. Now that they're capping for you, you can then push off the objective, scout out enemy positions, find out where they're spawning, maybe take out a rally point or two, and then be able to slow the enemy advance into your objective. When you're on defense, the same thing applies. You want to have your AI hold the objective while you push out, scout ahead, and try to find those clusters of enemy AI who are hiding in buildings like I just told you guys to do. This is the best way, I think, to play Enlisted, and it's maybe not the most interesting or uh, you know, the best in terms of gameplay, but it is the most effective way at the time of this video. Perhaps that changes in the future, and I certainly hope so, but uh, again, as of right now, utilizing your AI as extra lives is the best use for them. I briefly mentioned before the different aggression levels and spacings that you can have for your squads as you play Enlisted. These hold over per match, so if you, for example, have your sniper set to passive early on in a match, then the next match you load into, they will retain that exact same uh, stance, which is fairly useful. I think a lot of players out there probably understand fundamentally different reasons to use the different uh, aggression stances, so I won't go too in-depth to them, but just keep in mind, if you don't want your AI shooting, uh, then have them on passive. But if you want your AI to shoot back and return fire uh, or, you know, have the initiative, then you should have them on aggressive. Stances, on the other hand, are a little bit harder to understand and a little bit harder to use. In my opinion, the best reasons to use the different stances depends on where you're currently at. If you're crossing a big wide open area, it's probably best to be in the wide stance so a, you know, tank shell doesn't fly across the map and absolutely obliterate you. On the other hand, if you're inside a trench network or if you're crossing into a building, being on the wide stance is pretty dangerous, actually, because your AI will try to have a minimum distance apart from each other and will oftentimes go outside the buildings or go outside the trench network. So in those cases, being in the standard or the closed formation will be a lot more effective. But again, this will make you a lot more susceptible to explosions, which are, of course, very common and enlisted. 
Honestly, guys, if you just want to stick to the standard stance, there's nothing wrong with that. But using the different stances can be a good way to get a little bit more out of the game. Uh, so if you have the time to do that, consider going through and swapping those on the fly. Marking enemy positions is incredibly important in Enlisted, not just so your teammates know where the enemies are at, but it's also so your AI know where they're at. When you push the V key or mark on console, you're able to actually tell your AI where the enemies are at, which will just ever so slightly increase their reaction times. Instead of having to turn and shoot them, they will already be turned and will be able to shoot them. So again, if you know where the enemy is coming and you have your AI locked down in an area, consider hitting that mark key towards where the enemy is at so your AI will all face that direction. But also guys, keep in mind, your AI is not that effective in direct combat and while this will help them a little bit, it's not going to turn them into AI terminators or anything like that. And finally guys, our last tip goes hand in hand with that hold position thing I was talking about earlier. If your AI are holding a position, or honestly just running around randomly, and you see them start to die, either through the kill feed or above your minimap, where you can see the various skulls indicating a dead squad member, that means that your AI is obviously dying, and you should defend them. You should always try to protect your AI in these situations. And more importantly, if someone is killing your AI, that's someone that you can go kill and get some XP and some score for doing so. So kind of have some situational awareness when it comes to this. Your AI can actually be great kind of trip wires for an objective. One thing you can do is use the personal commands to put a single AI, say, on the bottom of an objective. If there's a multi-floored uh, objective, put them on the bottom. If you see them die, then you can have the rest of your AI upstairs and you can hot swap to them and engage whoever has now pushed onto the objective. This is just a good way to understand and have some better situational awareness and use your AIs to uh, kind of, you know, as trip wires and as almost scouts. But that is it, guys. That is everything about AI that you need to know for Enlisted, or at least 95%. Enlisted is a game that is constantly changing, and the AI especially are changing all the time. So if you guys want to have all of the updated news, guides, and information about these changes, as well as information and guides for all parts of Enlisted, make sure you guys are sub to the channel. I always do appreciate it, it helps me out, and of course you guys get the benefit of all of those guides. But without anything else, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.